Hey guys, what's up? Lightbulb Joe here. Today we're going to discuss Avengers Endgame, directed by Anthony and Joe Russo. Came out April 26, 2019. This review will be spoilers were spoilers ridden. If you have not seen it yet, please do not watch it. Um, before I talk about the actual film, we're going to talk about the lead up to the film and how the internet died April 2nd, and I was a part of that. So April 2nd is when the uh, tickets went on sale, right? It was a Tuesday. I conveniently head off from work and I was like, awesome. I'm going to get it, going to get up early. I'm going to buy the tickets. Um, so excited. Problem was I was away this past weekend when the film came out, I was in Arizona for a wedding and I could not see the film in New York. So I had to buy my tickets online in order to see it opening weekend in Arizona. The only way to actually see it was to see it on the Saturday of my trip the 27th because of the scheduling and road tripping in between and flights and when the wedding actually was etc so saturday the 27th i was all set to buy the tickets and i was waiting on on the websites i used fandango i used adam i used regal i used amc i used flickster I was on every single website, as everyone and their mother was, because that's what you did. April 2nd, when the tickets came out, everyone wanted tickets at the same time. And the internet died. And it's hysterical because no one factored in the server strength for some reason that this is a super sought out film, that everyone wants to see this film, that it was already breaking records for pre-sale, and that you already knew it was going to break box office records. And here we are now... Uh, Opening weekend was $1.2 billion worldwide. Opening weekend, QM, $1.2 billion worldwide. Insane. Never has happened before. Insane. But this is the movie that everyone has wanted to see. This is the f end of a saga, basically, of, of 11 years of film for certain story arcs, certain wrap-ups. Spider-Man Far From Home is technically the end of Phase 4 of the Infinity Saga. Uh, end of Phase 3 for the Infinity Saga. Phase 4 is going to start next year with a movie that has not been announced yet. So, uh, release date-wise. So, we, we will see what Phase 4 brings us. But, um, Far From Home starts, I think it's like a couple minutes after Endgame ends. That's what Kevin Feige had, uh, CEO of uh, Marvel Studios. Um, that's what he announced. So I get my tickets on April 2nd, only from sheer magic, basically, because I'm I'm going through the sites. I'm on a queue for Fandango, which then breaks down. And eventually, I, just, I don't even, honestly, I don't remember how I got the tickets, to be completely honest. It was through Regal or it was through Fandango. I'm pretty sure it was through Regal. So I found the theater that was near my hotel. It's like 20 minutes away. But I had a problem with my bank because they kept taking out money and refunding money, taking out money and refunding money. So I didn't actually know if I had tickets. It happened like eight or nine times. So at one point I noticed that one transaction was not refunded and then I get an email saying that my order for three tickets because it was me, my mom, and my dad um, was confirmed. So then I'm like, all right, I don't actually know if this is accurate because, or a fluke with the email because I already had all these you know, returns to my account. So I was like, all right, I'll just call the theater in Arizona to see if it's accurate. So I call the theater and I realize I'm in a time, I'm in three time zones away because <laughs> I live in New York and I'm like, crap. So I had to wait and wait and wait until the box office opens to actually call them. The girl confirmed I had it. Um, it, it, it was, it, it was a five hour ordeal. No joke. Five hours on my day off to get these tickets. I had such a headache. I was so mad. I was so happy at the same time because I actually got them. It was a it was a scene. So this past weekend we go, uh, me and my mom and myself go, and we've seen it. Now I have a very small bladder. I was very nervous watching this film because it's a three hour long film. I was afraid of a potty break. See it, and it went like that. You just did not assume that it was a three hour long movie. So then afterwards, I speak to my brother because he was seeing it Sunday, the twenty eighth. And I was like, listen, I have to see this movie again. What time are you seeing it when we get back to New York? So he told me I got tickets. I got a handicap seat in his theater conveniently because it was about 92% sold out. And I got a handicap seat and I was so excited. So I saw it again. So I saw the movie in 
Arizona on Saturday and in New York on Sunday. And I think it's pretty cool that I saw the movie in two separate states. So kudos to me. Wipe off the shoulders, pat on the back. Okay, this film, here is where all the spoilers come into play. Okay, so I'm waving my arms rapidly so you cannot watch it if you've seen spoilers. So stop the video now. And here we go. Spoiler time. Plot. The movie opens with a beautiful prologue of Hawkeye and his family at their ranch. He is on house arrest, just like Scott was on house arrest, and we, we hear all about that in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, he's teaching his daughter how to shoot some arrows, and uh, next thing he knows, they're all vanished. They turn to dust. He then goes off on a killing spree as Ronan. Um, we later see him again in Tokyo. <sighs> What else? So also in the beginning of the film at Avengers headquarters, you have Nat, um, Natasha Romanoff, Scarlet, I'm not Scarlet Witch, whew, losing my mind, Black Widow, who is kind of in charge of Avengers headquarters. And she's keeping updated on everyone who's doing their patrols and stuff like that. So Rocket and Nebula are off in space, checking out leads. Um, Okoye of the... Uh, uh, Milaj, Dora Milaj, uh, Dora Milaj of the uh, Wakanda is doing her stuff. Um, Rhodey is doing his stuff, and Carol Dan Danvers, uh, Captain Marvel is doing her stuff. So they all just check in from time to time with Nat, because um, there's nothing going on. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to move on. It's been five years. So the movie takes place in 2023, five years after the snap. Technically, it's this hand, because he uses his left hand. <clears throat> We then see um, Steve, our beautiful Chris Evans that he is, Steve Rogers, Captain America, is leading a support group for these military pe personnel at a, in, in a church on like how to how to move on, how to get over the snap, how to continue on with life, etc. And one of the Russo brothers, I can't remember if it's Anthony or Joe, but he plays this character in the support group, who is this gay character, and he's t talking about how he went on this date with a guy and the guy, you know, and he were just trying to figure out what to do, you know, moving on, but they survived the snap. The guy cried at the salad, he cried out at the dessert, and then Steve was saying, well, it's good, it's good you're, you're getting out there and I'm happy to hear, you know, you're trying and stuff like that. Now, it was a very subtle scene referencing just going out with a guy and it's important because a lot of the countries that this film is being shown in still has hostility towards the LGBTQI community. So it's important because of that subtlety. A lot of people are mad that it didn't have more of a LGBTQ representation, but baby steps um, as far as this is concerned. Like, yes, there will be some mainstream same-sex superhero soon. It it's given. Not every superhero is going to be a white cisgendered male, right? It's just not a thing. That's why Black Panther was so successful, amongst other things within the film, but it's true. That's why Captain Marvel, the film, was so successful. That's why Wonder Woman was so successful, because you don't need a white cisgender male to, you know, be the main character of the film. It's not 1952 anymore. So, with that being said, that little subtlety was really, really nice. And then Steve actually checks in on that. Um, but while this is happening, you have this scene where a rat is going through a storage facility, goes into um, Scott and Luis's van, where the uh, miniature quantum realm is being kept. And the rat runs across this remote thing, the quantum realm uh, portal, opens up again, shoots Scott out, and he's like, holy shit, what just happened? So it's really thanks to the rat that we have the entire film, to be completely honest. Scott gets out, Scott goes to Avengers headquarter, he meets up with Captain America and Nat, they go over how Scott was in the quantum realm, and Scott's like, listen, I was in the quantum realm, and she, Nat was like, man, that must have been a rough five years for you, and he's like, that's the thing, it wasn't five years, it was only five hours for me. Quantum realm time is very different. So then they talk about a time heist, and how if they can figure out how to time travel, then they can go to to get the stones from the past to prevent Thanos from getting the stones to prevent the snap from ever happening. That's the plot. So they're like, how do we do this? So they go to this cottage by a lake um, to speak to someone about this quantum physics because they don't understand it fully. The cottage by the lake happens to be owned by Tony and Pepper Stark, 
with their beautiful daughter. And um, they're trying to convince Tony to help them. And he said, guys, I'm done. I'm done. This is my second chance. I am done. I cannot screw this up. We cannot do this. It's not possible. We're not doing this. So also Scott sees his daughter is five years older, Cassie. So he's freaking out that it's been five years and he actually sees her and he's just so, so grateful and happy that she's still alive. So then the group then leaves Tony and, his, and Pepper and the, and the daughter and they go uh, talk to Bruce Banner. Now Bruce has been experimenting with the Hulk and gamma radiation. So he figured out that if he doesn't treat Hulk like a cure, but the actual solution, he can combine both great aspects of the two together. So it's now Bruce Banner personality-wise, mind, in the Hulk body. Genius! Super cool seeing that. I really enjoyed that. It was very neat. So then they had this little lunch, and they, Scott has this stupid, weird scene with these kids who don't want a picture with him, but they want a picture with the Hulk. It's kind of funny. And Bruce is saying, listen, this is not my domain. Like, I am not a quantum physicist. Like, I don't know all of this. I know some, but I don't know all of it. So it's not, my, not really my department. So they're trying to figure it out. And then Tony is playing around with it, and he figures out that he can actually do it. So he creates the time thing. The other Avengers are trying to experiment and they keep sending Scott back and forth through time, but it's really sending time through Scott, not Scott through time. So he comes back as a baby, he comes back as a human, he comes back as a teenager, a human as in an old person. And then regular Scott again, and he's this funny little scene where it's like, oh, I think I peed myself, but I don't know which version of me it actually was. It probably was just me as me. It's funny. So then Tony comes to the, the headquarters with the these little like things these gps time time gps things as he explained it they wind up building a quantum thing they get uh jeremy renner's hawkeye to come back um because nat stops him in tokyo from killing a bunch of people as ronin so he comes on the team nebula and rocket are back ant-man is back um Rhodey is back Rhodey's there steve Thor is back after <laughs> after Rocket and Hulk go to get Thor. Thor is just let himself go. He's got a full dad bod, full full beard. He's hanging out with Korg and Meek um, in New Asgard, as the Valkyrie has had explained that you know she's also really the one in charge. He just comes out once a month to get supplies, quote unquote, beer. Um, so Thor is going through a lot of stuff, a lot of character development within that character sword arc because. Thor Ragnarok changed him. Even Thor Dark World changed him. You know, that's where he lost his mother. Um, Infinity War obviously changed him. Um, it's just, it's just more, more stuff. More, a lot more stuff. So, with with all, with all that being said, the live team members are back. They get fitted in their quantum suits. They all have an objective to get the six stones from the past to bring them to the present. So, one, it's three teams for six stones. So, Thor and Rocket go to get the Ether, the Reality Stone, um, which is still in Natalie Portman at that point during the Dark World story. Nat and Clint go to get the Soul Stone and what? Something else. Nat and Clint go to get to the Soul Stone and the Power Stone, um, as well as Nebula and Rhodey. So Nebula and Rhodey then break off with Nat and, Flint and Clint. Um, to get the Power Stone from Morag, where Chris Pratt gets it. And then Nat and um, Clint go to... I can't remember the name of it. To get the Soul Stone. Then we have Ant-Man, Captain America, and Iron Man go to New York 2012 to get the Time Stone. Oh, and Hulk. To get the Time Stone, to get the uh, Space Stone, and to get the Mind Stone. So everyone goes their separate ways. There's hiccups in each everyone's plans. It was very interesting having Bruce Banner interact with the ancient one talking about timelines after, you know, Tony was very adamant to Scott saying back to the future is should not be what you're basing time travel off of. They also mentioned Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. So Bill and Ted is canon within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Perfect. As well as back to the future. Um, so there's hiccups in everyone's plans. Nat eventually sacrifices herself to get the Soul Stone. Nebula is hijacked, kind of, by Thanos in the 2014 version because, um, her 
system is identical to the 2014 system nebula so then there's the 2023 nebula and the 2014 nebula are having a little battle and the 2014 nebula takes the incognito of the 2023 nebula to then go with the avengers to then get thanos 2014 thanos to uh modern 2023 where the, all of them have the stones again so thanos doesn't have to technically go get the stones again because they're already in one singular location because of the time hopping you have gamora back the 2014 gamora interacting with the 2023 nebula beautiful Beautiful sister arc again, friend arc again. You have what? You have Rocket and Thor in 2013 getting the ether from Natalie Portman. But there's a beautiful scene between Thor and his mom. And it, it's really nice seeing. It was really cool seeing that, you know, he can't like fully change himself unless he accepts what's happened kind of a thing it, it, it was really cool it was really it was a nice touching moment um the 2012 new york scenes you have bruce like i said talking to the ancient one to get the time stone uh you have ant-man and iron man going for the space stone which is the tesseract and you have what chris evans as captain america going for the mind stone so eventually Captain America fights Captain America. It's kind of hysterical. You have Thor, not Thor. You have uh, Iron Man and Ant-Man inadvertently giving Loki back this the Tesseract. So that was kind of a poo-poo on their part. Um, but the whole the whole movie was revolving around Chris Evans's ass. And it was hysterical. And because they're saying, um, that's America's ass. <laughs> and then at one point after Captain America knocks out Captain America, Captain America 2023 knocks out Captain America 2012, he looks at his own ass and he's like, that is a nice ass. That is America's ass. Hysterical. Absolutely hysterical. So the um, emojis of the American flag and the peach have been trending quite frequently because of Captain America. Chris Evans' ass is just gorgeous. So perfect. Hysterical. Um, so then Chris Evans... Uh, Steve Rogers and Tony Stark are t discussing how to get the Tesseract and pin particles because they need the pin particles in order for the quantum realm to work. So they realized that if they go back to 1970 when the bunker in Jersey was still active where uh, Dr. Zola was working, which we discuss in Captain America Winter Soldier, um, then they could still, then they could technically get pin particles and the Tesseract at the same time. So they go back to 70. Steve sees Peggy at some point. Tony interacts with his dad, Howard, at some point. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. That's where um, Stanley's last cameo actually is in 1970, New Jersey, in this little jump. So they get more pin particles. They get the Tesseract. Everyone brings everything back. Um, everyone is devastated that Nat is dead because of yet another sacrifice for the Soul Stone. So they put together an Infinity Gauntlet. The Infinity Gauntlet is Iron Man tech um, for the right hand because Thanos' was for the left hand. So they're debating who's going to use it because it nearly destroyed Thanos. And we know that from the beginning of the film, when they go visit Thanos at the garden, Thor chops his head off, but they eventually chop the glove off, realizing the stones aren't there. And Thanos' big thing is, I'm inevitable. Um, because he used the stones to destroy the stones. So there can never be a connection. Correction, technically. Minus the quantum realm being a full-on effect within the Ant-Man series. So... Hulk puts on the glove because his body is gamma radiation and there's a lot of gamma radiation, you know, coming off of the glove anyway. So he puts the glove on. It nearly burns this whole side of him um, and he tries to use it. But when he's using it, what happens? He brings things back. Like he snaps his finger and he uses it, right? So like it, con it comes, it like it burns him. But while he's on the ground in pain, the 2014 Nebula hijacked the Quantum Realm to get Thanos and crew and his war machines, basically, into 2023 Realm in upstate New York at Avengers Headquarters, right? So that's where this final battle takes place. So um, the building explodes. Everyone is scattered. Clint is trying to figure out what to do with the gauntlet. Rocket, Rhodey, and Hulk are, you know, under the ground as the water's coming in. Um, Iron Man and Steve are trying to, you know, figure out how to get everyone together. Um, Rocket, or I already discussed Rocket. Um, yeah, so then 
there's there's battles going on. Thor is coming into play as well. Then Thanos comes down off of his ship. 2014 Thanos comes down off his ship, just pops a squat, and then he eventually fights Iron Man, Captain America, Thor. And then as he's like beating everybody, this beautiful, beautiful moment in Steve's ear, you hear Sam's voice, Sam Falcon. And we obviously Falcon disintegrated from Infinity Infinity War, excuse me. And he's like, Cap, come in, Cap. And then all of a sudden you see Doctor Strange's, you know, sparkly spiral in the background. And then there's many sparkly spirals in the background. And everyone is back from all over the world, from all over space. You have all of your Guardians, you have all of your Wakandans, you have all of your Avengers. Everyone just comes through these portals to fight Thanos' team. So you have all the Avengers, and Chris Evans literally says to the 85-plus characters, um, Avengers, assemble. This is after he grabs Majorni, by the way, Thor's hammer, which Thor brings back from 2013. So big, big battle. Everyone's going around. Peter Parker's flying around. Pe Pepper Potts is, uh, has another Iron Man suit. Everyone's flying around. Everyone's doing that thing. Everybody's killing everybody. It's gorgeous. So during all of the battles, right, um, you have what? what? What happens towards these end of these battles? Lots of deaths on both sides. Lots of things. Scarlet Witch's fight with Thanos is beautiful. Because um, she's like, you took everything from me. And he's like, girl, I don't even know you. And it's funny because it's a 2014 Thanos. He doesn't know who Scarlet Witch is. We don't. He doesn't meet Scarlet Witch until 2015, technically. Beautiful. So, things happen. And Captain Marvel finally shows up again. She destroys his ship. And then Thanos eventually uh, gets the gauntlet and puts it on. Puts on the, the, the glove. But as Captain Marvel is holding the glove back, um, <clears throat> to the first snap or the second snap, I don't remember how many snaps there were. He, uh, what? What's my words? I was trying to say something. Um, she, like, holds him off, and then Stark looks at Doctor Strange, and he holds up a finger, and, like, Stark knew what that meant. So Stark, uh, Tony attacks Thanos again, takes the stones off, but we don't actually see it. So then Thanos holds up his hand and he snaps, but all you hear is like, tink, and then he turns around and there's no stones because Tony took the stones. Tony put the stones on his own Iron Man tech, which then fused with it, and then Thanos is like, how? You're just a mere human or something like that. And then Tony's like, you forget one thing. I am Iron Man. And Tony snaps his fingers. And then everyone that... Thanos tried to get rid of during his first snap again um, was eradicated because Tony then snapped and got rid of Thanos and all of his crew. So that way there's no more possibility of that ever leaving again. Nothing changed. Tony still has his daughter. It's just getting rid of Thanos and crew. Beautiful, right? But Tony is mortal. And that the Infinity Stones were never meant for one singular mortal. So... Tony is burnt. He is dying. Um, Spider-Man swings over. Peter Parker comes out. Tom Holland is sobbing. And he said, Mr. Stark, sir, come on, I'm sorry. You know, you can, we won, we won, we did it, we won. You know, you can get up and, and stuff like that. And it's so emotional and I'm crying and everyone in the theater is crying. And uh, Pepper Potts comes over and Rhodey comes over and Pepper's like, listen, Tony, like you can, we won, you, you can rest now. You can rest. And she asks Friday, what's going on? And Friday, the AI in the suit says, life signs are critical. So Tony passes away. And then the next cutscene we have is the funeral. So you have Pepper with their daughter and Happy and Rhodey leading the procession um, at the lake house, the, the cabin at the lake house, down a little pier. Um, she has these things of flowers. In the flowers is that little gift she gave him in Iron Man 1, which says, uh, proof that Tony Stark has a heart. Puts it in the water, lets it go. And the camera does this gorgeous pan from character family to character family. You go from Pepper, Happy, Rhodey, Daughter, um, over to... Who? There's so many characters. You go you go to um, Thor and Company. You go to the Pym family. You go to um, the Guardians. You go to Scott and Hope, who's actually with the Pym family. You go from Peter to May. I'm, I'm jumping around, actually. I'm not actually listing them in order. But then you go to um, Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch, and who? Someone else. Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch, Sam. 
uh, Falcon. And then behind them, there's this kid who you don't know who it is, which I'll get to. And then you get uh, behind him, and then there's Maria Hill up on the stairs. Then you have Carol Davers on the steps. Then you have Nick Fury behind them, right? So all of these people that have been affected or have affected Tony were all in effect. Now, the kid that everyone in the audience in both states kept saying, who is that? Who is that? That is Ty Simpkins. He plays Harley Keener in Iron Man 3, and he reprised his role for this film. In Iron Man 3, Harley Keener, uh, Ty Simpkins as Harley Keener, is the kid in Tennessee who Tony breaks into his you know little garage. Tony is the mechanic. He alters the potato gun. So Harley and Tony have a lot of heart-to-heart -heart moments within that Tennessee stuff because Harley's trying to help him with the suit, but he'll also help him calm himself down because Tony's still fighting with his PTSD from New York. So Harley really was a very important part of Tony's character arc calming him down um, with the sarcasm, with the wit, and showing him that he can actually be okay. He just has to, you know, think of something else and just breathe. Just breathe. Everything's going to be okay. Just breathe. And to have Ty Simpkins come back for that funeral scene as Harley Keener, if they, if they gave him a potato gun, maybe everyone will actually know what it is. I follow Ty. Like, I know how much he's grown, but super important to have both Peter and Harley at the funeral. Peter Parker was a big, big part of Tony's life. He was like a son to him. And Harley was a big part of Tony's life for that brief moment he was actually in Tennessee because of all of the emotional and mental stuff that was going on with Tony. Um, it was, it was so important and goosebumps knowing that that character is Ty Simpkins, that that's Harley Keener. Gorgeous. So at the very, very end of the film, um, you have Bruce explaining to Cap to, you know, we go to the corner room again, put all the stones back where we got them. So that way those timelines aren't affected. It's just our timeline that is now in balance, in proper balance, how it should have been, how no one should have actually been snapped. <clears throat> so Steve puts all those stones back, but doesn't return. And then all of a sudden Bucky says to Sam, hey, Sam, and he points to this random guy sitting on a bench by the lake. So Sam goes over and sees that it's Steve Rogers, but it's a very, very old Steve Rogers carrying this giant bag. So Steve is saying, you know, he said he'd figured t he'd take uh, Tony's advice and get one of those lives he keeps talking about. And in retrospect, he knew exactly what he did. So he gives the shield to Sam. Sam is the new Captain America. Um, Cap is now at rest. And then you just see uh, Steve's memories of when he actually faded, uh, where he landed and stayed. He stayed in 1945, um, and we see him dancing with Peggy Carter through a window of the house to this song, which then translates into the credits. And it is against everything that they said about timelines within the film, but that's America's ass right there. He deserves happiness. He deserves his Peggy Carter. And he got Peggy Carter. Peggy Carter got Steve Rogers. And it was just a gorgeous, gorgeous way, gorgeous way to end to end this. Now, a thing that's that's important is there's no end credits. It's just um, uh, no post-credit scenes. I'm sorry. Um, it's just metal clanging, which is the same metal that we hear when Tony is first starting to build himself. So it ends at the beginning, basically, just showing that there's more to come. Phase four is to come. Spider-Man Far For Home is to come, right? All of his classmates are starting school again five years after they all vanished, technically. So it's it's important. Now, a thing that's also interesting is they focused a lot on the teenagers. They focused a lot on Ty. They focused a lot on Peter. They focused a lot on Ant-Man's daughter, Cassie. They focused a lot on Hawkeye's daughter as the next Hawkeye. Is it possible, hmm... They're leading into a Teenage Avengers movie. Something to that extent. Led by Peter Parker. Because Ty can easily, Harley Keener can easily be a Teenage Iron Man. Wear the suit. Easily. All he gets to do is ask Pepper. Easily. And I see it. I totally see that happening. That makes perfect sense to me. Um, so, yeah. This was a very long review. It's a very long conversation. I did not cry once. I'm very proud of myself. I cried many times in the movie theaters. But, yeah, what did you guys think of Avengers Endgame? Did you know that Ty Simpkins was that character, Harley Keener, in the background of the funeral? Super important. 
So thank you, Captain America. Your ass is America's ass. Thank you, Tony Stark. Thank you, Avengers. We love you, 3000. Um, and thank you, Robert Downey Jr., for going from rock, rock bottom to this absolute genius performer and inspiration. You, you've given us an amazing character with amazing story that has just changed so much that there is that just shows you how much you can grow as an individual within 11 years amazing amazing we love you 3000 mahalo guys